So with all the recent traffic I've been getting and the changes I've made to my rack setup, I thought this would be a good time to do a updated rack tour. This rack here has been replaced. I had that white rack previously, but this is a um, APC rack. And in this rack, as my cat comes over to say hi, Onyx, goofy cat, um, I have a couple of battery backups. The bottom one is a 3000 VA battery backup. I unfortunately am unable to use that because it's 208 volt only and I have 240 volt here. I need to buy a step down transformer but it's not something I have the money for right now with everything that's going on. I do try to power it on once in a while just to top the batteries off but it's not happy when I run it because it'll go into over voltage mode. So I try not to run it too hard. And the battery backup above it, if memory serves correct, this should be a 1500 VA battery backup, standard 120 volt. Then I got an older 1000 VA one as well. And both these currently have network cards in them. The 3000 VA one doesn't, but I just didn't want to put a card in it if I'm not going to use the battery backup. This is a custom build. It's supposed to be my cold storage, yet I, for some reason, have it on all the time. It does get regular backups, though, for my primary storage. This R720 here, I haven't uh, connected it yet. It's going to be a testing server if I want to slap some stuff together or do something weird. This is a uh, OEMR version, so it's been debranded in software. So it, it knows it's an R720, but it doesn't show any of the branding, basically. And I went with the 8 LFF bay because then I can use either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives. And since it's a test server, I shouldn't need to worry about having more drives. And these three servers are basically all R720s, and they're rail mounted, so that's nice. Kind of hard to pop them out while they're uh, locked in, though, with one hand. Next server up, that basically is my primary backup for my files, along with a few other things like security cameras, and uh, eventually I need to figure out how to back up ESXi to the hard drives in there. And this is my primary R720, my workhorse. And by workhorse, I mean the server that just sits around and does nothing. This has my uh, primary file server on it. And it has eight 480 gigabyte SSDs and a RAID 50, and then eight 1.92 terabyte SSDs and a RAID 50. My cat's getting naughty. See if he'll show up. Oh, I got the naughty laser eyes. I see you over there, goofy cat. Anyways, yeah, so I think I have, oh, I'm trying to think. I think I have like 13 terabytes of SSD and then I have uh, 16 terabytes of spinning disk in this R720, it's, a, um, it's an LFF bay also. Also in this server, I have a pair of Tesla M40s and 256 gigabytes of RAM. These two servers are configured with the i350 and x540 combo network adapter that mounts to the motherboard. And they also have the H710P RAID controllers. I am running TrueNAS, but I'm virtualizing TrueNAS, so I'm letting the RAID controller do the work. Supposedly that's worse, but when it comes to pushing traffic to my PCs, I'm I'm only hitting them at gigabit speeds, so there's no way that these are going to get overwhelmed. Eventually, I'm going to put some other stuff on here. Uh, I do use one of my virtual machines for video editing, and I have a few test virtual machines for screwing around with stuff. 
I thought about making my primary desktop virtual machine, but I'm kind of torn on that. I almost feel like I want the phys physical hardware access because there's just not a good remote access client that has good latency. This is just a blank, if that's not obvious. I also have one down here. I wanted to put a blank here, but this uh, sits a little proud, so I can't cover that. This is uh, just regular PDU. There's nothing plugged into it. It's mostly just here, so I have a front outlet access. And this is a 4U drawer, currently being used to store empty boxes and cables. <laughs> Very, very practical use. There's nothing special about these. These are just boxes that I uh, was storing hard drives in that I put in my servers. And that is a little stiff, so I might have to get motivated sometime and grease the uh, rails so it'll roll in and out better. I have two rack consoles. This bottom one is a 17 inch model and it's connected to a KVM. I need to figure out where to route the remote for the KVM because there's no keyboard hotkey for that. Then I got a 15 inch rack console, which is basically what I'm using for what I'm doing projects, testing stuff. These two servers are kind of uh, special, I guess, I don't know. Um, I need to start working on this R730. I want to test it and get it ready to sell. And then this is my PowerEdge, PowerEdge C6320 I've been working with. Four node server with 64 cores and terabyte of DDR4. I haven't had time to do some more stuff with this. I got some of the modules I needed so I can connect all the nodes to my network. At least, uh, from this side. I've got to find the modules connect to my switch still. And I still have another 4U of open space. I don't know what the future of this is going to be. I might put some weird servers in here. I got some like Pentium 3 servers or some other vintage stuff, but I don't really have any purpose for this. Really, these three servers are overkill for what I need. And then I got some networking, of course. This is my primary switch. It's a EX3300 series, PoE Plus. Gigabit RJ45 with uh, four SFP Plus ports. This switch is for a different subnet where I do naughty stuff. And by naughty, I don't really mean anything too interesting. It just, just use it to go to websites that I don't think are safe if I'm trying to find manuals. And kind of wording that poorly um, just a lot of times you Google stuff the results you get look kind of sketchy so I don't like to do that with my main PC on my network you have you know the usual modem and this is my Raspberry Pi I can't tell you what model it is but it's running Pi hole I was told I could virtualize that on my server if I wanted to so I might do that the Raspberry Pi has a PoE hat on it and the thing runs pretty hot. I'm sure the fan's spinning right now even. Yeah, the fan always spins once uh, once it starts getting the summer temperatures. I don't know what the temperature in this room is right now, but it is getting air conditioning through that entryway since I leave the door open. And I would guess it's probably around 85 Fahrenheit. I do need to do some cleanup here. I got a lot of cables that are plugged in that are for testing so um, some of those aren't permanent I know some people they like to run their cables into the back of patch panels and then use short little jumpers but I don't know I, that my opinion is just kind of silly so <laughs> I'm not gonna waste money on something that just gonna make it look pretty oh and then on the back of the server I'm gonna need my flashlight on the phone not too much going on in the back. I got a couple switches. These are running network ports in my office, and this is running network ports in other parts of my office. I 
don't have this particular switch on battery backup because anything that's going to be plugged into it's not important. I'm probably going to hook up some of my uh, test servers into this as well since I don't want to waste battery backup power on stuff that's not important. And I've done the videos of the back of this if memory serves correct. This is the 4-node C C6320 server. And it's just right now sitting idle. The interesting thing is even though it's not on, it's generating heat. I don't know why. It's not that hot, but yeah. So yeah, you guys see the cable mess. Here's my cable management arms for my servers. I'm not too happy with how this all turned out, but it's the best I can do with what I have. And yeah, just more cable mess. I need to get this a little bit more under control eventually. There's still a few things I need to do. I don't know where the cable man oh there it is. Cable management arm for this is on a shelf, so I'll have to get that done up. I also have this APC 0U PDU. It's uh 200 to 240 volt this is the rating and 20 amps. Eventually what the goal is to do is I'm going to take that 3000 VA battery backup. I'm going to plug it into this PDU and then the outputs on the battery backup I'm going to have another PDU along this side that'll be on on battery backup. And then I might run some of the my primary servers basically on on that 3000 VA battery backup basically make that that big battery backup for my most important stuff and then kind of leave the lower important stuff on the smaller battery backups but we'll kind of see what happens there oh I gotta stand up now there we go stand up and make some old man noises <laughs> but yeah some cable management needs to be done these servers are kind of making a problem since they're just test servers and they're not really meant to stay in here. I just need to finish doing my projects with them before I sell them. Some of this can be cleaned up a little better. I need to put some more zip ties and clean these up and then I'll probably uh, try to tuck them in a little bit. That way I have room for another 0U PDU. Funny thing about these is they use some annoying proprietary serial cable that I don't have. And I forget what that connector is. I think it's I think it's RJ11. Might be RJ12, I forget. But I ended up hacking together one using a phone cable and a serial cable and I didn't have the right connections for grounding, so I just tied them to nothing and apparently the connection wasn't noisy enough where there was a problem, so I was able to get this one defaulted so I could set it up the way I want. But there's my other cat, Smokey. Yeah, so quite a bit going on in here. I think my power draw is around 1500 watts continuous with everything going. And the sad thing is, most of this isn't even doing anything. The stuff I get used, the most use out of on this setup is my file servers and then the networking switches with the PoE powered access points I've running off them. So hopefully that's interesting. Thanks for watching.